Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch, brought to you by, amazingly enough, thegaminggang.com, of which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. So welcome aboard. Tonight is Tuesday, June 6th, 2023. This is live stream. 928. If you're not overly familiar with this show, let me point out super, super casual around here. We just normally hang out talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news and take a first look at a new game, or at least the game that's new to me. Well, this month, little bit different we are going to sprinkle in some live reviews that's right and tonight i am going to share with you my thoughts on vessen mythic britain and ireland from free league publishing that's right we will take a look at this gazetteer slash adventure collection in just a bit tonight So stay tuned for that. So, of course, we do tackle the tabletop gaming news first around here. So if you are tuning in for my review, let me point out, it'll probably be about 35, maybe 40 minutes before we get on into that. So if you're watching live, kick back, relax, put your feet up. I know the week has just got it started, but still, be good to yourself. Now... If you are watching 30 minutes or more after the show has ended, there will be timestamps. So if you are impatient, you can jump ahead. Now, those timestamps are located in the show notes. And depending on the device you might be watching this on, could be right there in the timeline of the video itself. So if you're watching after the show has ended, you can skip past the news if you'd like. Although I've got some cool news for everyone this evening of course when you're not watching videos on the gaming gang channel be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in tabletop gaming news reviews and a whole lot more that you will not find here on the youtube channel you know the drill get your geek on at thegaminggang.com Also, this is live stream, so that means there is chat available. It's not on screen. One of the ways I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. And you must be a subscriber to the channel for at least 48 hours before you can take part in chat yet another way that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But if you want to say howdy, maybe you've got a question, a comment, maybe... You want to get a little closer look at something here in Mythic Britain and Ireland? By all means, chime in. I will do my best to respond. Let's see. Who do we have tonight? First out the gate is the Motor City Madman himself. Yes, one of our chat moderators, the Madman, is with us. As is Kathy Evans, Mark Dandy, John Mascola, Flaming Huron, who is another of our chat moderators. And Sly Blue Demon, who we haven't seen in a while. So welcome back, SBD. No, it would be S, yeah, SBD. I don't know why I stopped for a second. I'm like, Sly Demon Blue. No, it's Sly Blue Demon. Damn it. (laughs) So I should mention that this week, the Dispatch 
has a sponsor. That's right. This week, the Dispatch is sponsored by Armored Games and their RPG Night, which is up on Kickstarter. Hail and well met. In this game, you are a knight, though exactly what sort of knight is up to you. Perhaps you're a valorious tourney knight, skilled with a lance or a master of occult lore. Perhaps you are a manipulator in the courts with your spies whispering secrets in your ear or a battlefield commander ready to protect the realm. Whoever you create, your knight undoes evil and protects the innocent in Avalon, a fantastic land of magic and myth. You may slay monsters, drive back barbarian hordes, woo a spouse for power, fall in love with someone else, and die dueling your brother to the death for honor. The game isn't just about your knight. Between quests, time passes, and the game provides procedures to tell grander stories. Perhaps your lands may be beset by raids, or a pagan faith appeal to give them safe harbor, or you or someone in your house may find themselves in an illicit affair. You also create factions and points of interest around the world, which become, in turn, the seeds for later quests. This game is designed to be welcoming to any who wish to strap on armor and fight for glory. There are no limitations to creating individuals of many types of faith, ideal, gender, or personal identity, concept, or disposition. Finally, your first character is not your last. In time, as your knights die or retire, their heirs take over the leadership of the house. When you've played three generations of knights, the campaign is over. The Kickstarter is already half-funded. You can secure the hardcover of Knights for a pledge of around $27, depending on exchange rate, because this is out of Australia, if I remember correctly. Or you can pledge for just the PDF for around $14. This campaign will run through June 19th. Yes, I actually have another Athorian news piece tonight, but I find this interesting. In fact, we will get to take a look at this game because the uh, gentleman who contacted me from Armored Games is going to send along a proof copy. I don't know if we're going to get it before the Kickstarter ends, but we are going to dive on in. So I understand that this is kind of a rules light approach to a generational King Arthur game. So pretty sweet. And they are sponsoring the Dispatch all week long. Yes. Very nice. Kevin R. Smith is hanging with the gang tonight. Welcome, Kevin. So we are going to jump on into the news because I have got a pretty big News night ahead of us. First off, Sea of Thieves. Thieves. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got a, I got a big night of news ahead of us, and I'm not even to be able to pronounce the word thieves. Crying out loud. Let's try that again. From the top, as Anthony Good has swung on in. So Kevin says, so knight equals rules like Pendragon? Could be. Could be. Sea of Thieves. I just did it again. Sea of Thieves. Voyage of Legends sails into stores next month. Here's the latest from it. Steam Forged Games. Sure, I can say Steam Forged. I can't say Thieves. Welcome, pirates. Have you ever dreamed of being out on the ocean waves and search of treasure and adventure? Well, then, the Sea of Thieves is calling. Inspired by the hit video game, Sea of Thieves, Voyage of Legends is a competitive seafaring game of piracy. Explore the high seas with your friends in voyages packed with danger and excitement. But don't forget, 
only one of you can be crowned a pirate legend. You'll build a fearsome reputation as you compete for that title, battling sea monsters and pilfering plunder as you go. Build reputation by completing voyages, defeating foes, and gathering treasures. Upgrade your ship from a humble sloop to an imposing galleon. Visit the outpost, hire crew, make repairs, and sell your precious cargo. You're still in cargo, no doubt. Set sail whenever the wind carries you. There's no one route to victory. Beware, no ship is safe from the fearsome Kraken and Megalodon. So what are you waiting for? That treasure's not going to find itself. The journey to becoming a pirate legend awaits you. Sea of Thieves, Voyage of Legends is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, plays in around 90 to 120 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $59.99 when it arrives in stores on July 21st. So, so Flaming Heron says, slight typo in the link for Armored Games in the description. Missed an A. Flame Aaron's like, this doesn't exist. Isn't it? It's P-I-X-P-A? Wasn't that it? Let me jump back real quick. I don't know. What did I, what did I miss? What did I misspell here? No A in games. I don't know. I'm looking right at it here. It's armored games. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, I don't know. Oh, is there no A in the games in the link? Oh, that's wild. That would be something I would very easily miss. I'll tell you that. I will certainly fix that uh, tomorrow. So, Flaming Heron says, I have armored games. Oh, are you talking in the video description? Don't worry about that. That's, that's never, that's, uh, that's not even really live yet. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So, John said, I see the A. So, Flaming Heron's talking about the link that's in the show notes. So yes, I always go back through the show notes, to make sure that everything's okay. So yes, Flaming Heron's like, yeah, sorry, Jeff. Cause I'm like, wait a second. I'm looking right at it. <laughs> it's like, I'm losing my mind. I can't say thieves. Now I'm saying mysterious A's that don't exist. Actually it does exist. All righty then. So moving on to our next news piece. A new edition of the Princes of Florence, which actually includes two expansions, is arriving next month from WizKids. Here's the skinny. Experience the golden age of the Renaissance from your lofty position in the Italian nobility. Use your resources to support builders, artists, and scholars in their creative pursuits. As a patron of great works, your generosity and diplomacy will elevate the fame and reputation of your family. There can be only one winner. There can be only one. So it's a cutthroat competition to secure your place as the most prestigious princes or princesses of Florence. Bid and build. Place tiles to create the most attractive principality. During each round, you will participate in an auction, construct buildings, and cultivate landscapes within your principality. Inspire and acquire. Invite artists and scholars to your palazzi to provide them with the inspiration to produce great works, which will bring you fame and fortune. Defeat and expand. Climb the social ladder and be careful not to look down. After seven rounds, the player who has earned the most prestige points is the winner. This definitive edition of Princes of Florence collects the original game and two expansions the Muse and the Princess, and Cooperative Building. 
Adding new artwork and sleek graphic design, it's a must-have for old fans and curious newcomers. The Princes of Florence is for one to four players ages 12 and up, plays in around 70 to 90 minutes, will carry an MSRP of $54.99 when it hits stores in July. So it appears, for one, I like the art style. The art, I, I think the art style is pretty cool. So John says there can be only one drawing swords. <laughs> yes, you got that reference. So I like the art style, and it looks as if you might build your principality in kind of a, isn't it known as a polyon, polyominoes? Kind of like the Tetris pieces. So it sort of looks like that might play an aspect of it, as you can see right here, where it looks like that is somebody's uh, player board or principality board. Could be interesting. Could be kind of interesting. Moon Ride Long, let's talk about some role-playing game news. Because arriving later this month, from our friends over at Chaosium Inc. is the sixth edition of Pendragon's starter set. Yes, I told you we had two King Arthur game stories tonight. One is a sponsor. One is from a company we're good pals with. Pendragon is a role-playing game set in King Arthur's Britain. You take on the role of knights and overcome mythical monsters, rival knights, and other wondrous challenges in search of glory. The Pendragon starter set presents a world of great adventure. This is the time of the sword and the stone, of the boy king and Merlin, and their struggles against those who would seize the crown for themselves, and of the flowering of chivalry. This is a time of desperate battles, dark portents, enchanted forests, pride, and self-indulgence. What kind of knight are you? Do you believe in chivalry, or do you think might always makes right? Are you willing to die for your honor? Will you fight to rid the world of injustice, or use clout and power to take advantage of those beneath you? Combat in Pendragon is bloody and intense, and every knight must show valor sufficient to face it and gain great glory for their prowess. The Pendragon starter set contains everything you need to begin questing and adventuring. It includes a selection of pre-generated characters and a short campaign offering multiple sessions of gameplay. Inside this box, you'll find Book 1, The Adventure of the Sword in the Stone. Learn the rules for Pendragon as you play this solo adventure. Book 2, The Fabled Realm. Everything you need to know about the game's setting and core mechanics. And Book 3, The Sword Campaign a beginner-friendly campaign taking the player knights through the most important early events of King Arthur's reign, three game years in all. There's also appendices with additional rules and setting details, which are introduced as you play through the sword campaign. Eight player knights pre-generated, ready for adventure. 18 battle cards for generating battle encounters and opportunities as well as a set of seven polyhedral dice suitable for role-playing in Pendragon. The Pendragon 6th edition starter set will carry an MSRP of $29.99 when it arrives on June 29th. Yes, this is something else we will be taking a look at. Because I reached out to my friend Michael O'Brien, otherwise known as Mob, over at Chaosium. And they are going to be sending along the starter set, as well as, I think, the first of the new RuneQuest books is arriving. It's either later this month or early next. So we will be taking a look at that. That is the series of various different deity books that uh, was announced not too long ago. Flaming Heron says they're uh, really keen to see this. 
because Chaosium does some good starter sets. They do excellent starter sets. The Call of Cthulhu starter set is really, really well done. And in my opinion, I think the RuneQuest starter set actually one-ups the Call of Cthulhu starter set. And that's saying something. So we will get to take a look at this. So we're going to be able to take a look at Night as well as the starter set for the latest edition of Pendragon. Moving right along, arriving in August from Paizo Inc. is Pathfinder Rage of Elements. Here's what I know. Blaze like the sun, crash like the waves, thunder like a rock slide. Okay. Harness the overwhelming power of the most primordial forces of nature with Rage of Elements, a new 224-page rules resource for the Pathfinder role-playing game focused on the fundamental building blocks of reality itself. The elements are yours to control with the all-new Kineticist class, which brings one of fantasy's most popular hero types to Pathfinder. New elemental spells and gear provide tons of additional element-themed options for all character classes, and an extensive gazetteer provides an overview of the majestic elemental planes including two new ones, the decaying plane of metal and the vast and orderly forests of the plane of wood. A meaty bestiary presenting scores of element-themed creatures helps to populate these alien landscapes and liven up even the drabest material plane dungeon. The gateways to elemental power stand wide open with Pathfinder Rage of Elements. This 224-page hardcover is going to carry an MSRP of $54.99, or you'll be able to grab the PDF for $19.99 when they arrive on August 3rd. So this is the Paizo Inc. Gen Con release. And we should be... Taking a peek at this as well, I would think we should hopefully get a chance to take a look at this in late July. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that kineticist because, of course, you know, last airbender. I, I guess. I guess that's why. <laughs> I think that's what it is. John Muscola says they're already sold on Chaosium. They want to get Call of Cthulhu. Well, I will talk about a recent video I shared when we wrap up the news. Roger Perdome is with us. Good to see you once again. On to my final news piece. Now, last week I talked about the first of two bundles of holding, which feature Dungeon Crawl Classics Lankmar from Goodman Games. So why not? Let's talk about the second. Look sharp, adventurer. This Lankmar Thieves bundle, see, I was able to say thieves that time, is the second of two offers in progress featuring Dungeon Crawl Classics, tabletop fantasy role-playing game in the licensed Lankmar setting from Goodman Games, which, of course, is based on the Fritz Leiber stories of Foffer and the Grey Mouser. Revived from April 2021, DCC Lankmar has the main box set and early adventures. So if you're new to Lankmar or Dungeon Crawl Classics itself, you want to start there. But you'll want to return for this one because it includes the all-new companion collection with the greatest thieves in Lankmar and other recent scenarios. For just $17.95, you'll get all eight titles in the Lankmar collection. It's got a retail value of $71 as DRM-free PDFs, including the 164-page Gen Con tournament module, The Greatest Thieves in Lankmar, and seven adventures for low-level characters, levels one to three. Cheating Death, Unholy Knights in Lankmar, Mercy on the Day of the Eel, 
treachery in the beggar city, the short preview module Masks of Lankmar, and two Goodman releases that include Lankmar scenarios. DCC RPG Free RPG Day 2016 and the DCC Day 2020 Adventure Pack. These savings run through June 19th, as does the other bundle that runs through June 19th. And 10% of your payment after payment gateway fees will be donated to the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. Nice. So, Kevin says, Jeff can only say thieves if it's possessive. Well, okay. <laughs> so Kevin says, never mind. It was of thieves in both, wasn't it? He was thinking of Thieves World. Yes. A very good shared uh, universe uh, setting that uh, was pretty big back in the day. I would love, I wish they would do audiobooks of those. Do audiobooks of Thieves World. And then there was another one where they were like in hell. That was, that was all right. Like the first two or three were pretty good. So there you have it. A fantastic bundle of holding going on right now where essentially you can snag everything for Dungeon Crawl Classics Lankmar, everything that's been released to this point. I think it's for about $52. You can get all of it in PDF. Speaking of bundles, don't forget... This month is your last opportunity to get your hands on Conan Adventures in an Age Undreamed of from Modifius Entertainment. There is a huge bundle that's over on Drive Through RPG where you can get everything that Modifius produced for the game for $30. I think it's like $441 as far as retail value for those PDFs. We're not even talking about the physical books. So, Kevin says, Thieves World is another famous setting like Lankmar that he has never experienced. Obviously, that's why they get them confused. Oh, Lankmar far outshines Thieves World. There is, it's not even close. But, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just me, Emma. I'm a Liber fan. What can I tell you? All righty then. So that is it for the news tonight. Of course, I was just talking about that bundle over at Drive Through RPG. Don't forget, the gaming gang, thus the Dispatch, is affiliated with the One Bookshelf sites. So if you are going to visit Drive Through RPG or Dungeon Masters Guild, Storytellers Vault, War Game Vault, what have you please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, you get a small portion of that sale. And all those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up and help keep thegaminggang.com around. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. But if you like this video, if you dig the channel, if you... Find thegaminggang.com to be a valuable resource. Hell, if you just like what we do, you can always swing on over to paypal.me slash thegaminggang and make a small donation, such as the Madman recently did. And it wasn't a small donation either. So thank you kindly to the Madman. And I really do appreciate all of you out there who use the banner ads and or visit paypal.me because I don't do Kickstarters. I don't do Patreons. You help me stick around as do advertisers, as does our sponsor this week, Armored Games and their Kickstarter for the night role-playing game. So very nice. Very cool. All right, so we are going to jump on into my review of this one. 
Mythic Britain and Ireland in just a few moments. Did want to mention, if you have not checked it out, I shared this month's edition of Why You Should Play, and I discuss why you should play 7th edition Call of Cthulhu from Chaosium Inc. And I do point out, this is my all-time favorite role-playing game. How I... You know, I, I try to run other stuff. I, well, I shouldn't say try. I do run other things, but I always, man, it's it's like Godfather 3. It's like I get pulled back in. <laughs> pulled back into Call of Cthulhu. So I mentioned in the video, I, th I thought this was kind of funny, that uh, when I was uh, running the Castles and Crusades, kind of old school essentials adventure. Uh, my best friend, Elliot, was sort of like, oh, you know, I, yeah, I'll, I'll try to make it. I, yeah, I want to play. And I guarantee he, he wanted to play. So then I let him know that on the 19th, we're going to be playing again, but we're playing Call of Cthulhu. Because, yes, I am going to actually run Massive Nair Lothotep. And that's how I pronounce it. I don't know. I've had other people say, oh, no, you're pronouncing it wrong. And it's like, man, I've been pronouncing it that way for almost 40 years. I'm not going to change it now. Plus, once again, it is a fictional deity. I do not believe we ever got a, like, pronunciation guide from H.P. Lovecraft. So anyways, so I had mentioned to Elliot, I said, oh, we're going to play Call Cthulhu. So, I mean, if you can make it, two days later, he sends me his character and he's like, uh, so what time are we playing? How, how often are we going to be playing? It's like, Yep. So, and uh, I know my nephew is really excited because I've run a little bit of Call of Cthulhu for him and his friends. So, in fact, if I remember right, I ran the Deadlight. So, yeah, and he really dug it. He, re he really liked it a lot. So, that is uh, what I will be doing flaming here and said they pull you back in jeff <laughs> i had elliot at call of cthulhu yes i'm sure and the funny thing is i ran massive nair lototep for elliot way back in the day i've mentioned this before he his memory is not good like he probably can't tell you what he had for lunch today but he can regale you with stories from call of cthulhu adventures 40, 35, 30 years ago. But all the stuff he remembers from Massive Nair Lothotep was not in the adventure at all. It was just stuff that I came up with on the fly. So it won't really help him at all with what he remembers from <laughs> Massive Nair Lothotep. <laughs> Plus, the way the campaign is designed is the player characters don't have to go to each and every location after a certain point. They kind of have to hit London. They kind of have to hit Egypt. And then after that, they can do Kenya. They can do Shanghai. Uh, in the later editions, there's also Australia, which had in the original release, it was kind of like referenced, but it wasn't actually part of the adventure. So, so yes, I am looking forward to that. And of course, I have my Why You Should Play Call of Cthulhu video that uh, I, I want to say, I think I popped it up there on Sunday afternoon. So we have that. All right. So we are going to be diving on into 
my review in just a few moments. But first, I think it's time for a brief intermission. to you. I lost my head over Wilkins instant coffee. Have a cup? Yo! What do you suppose upset him? Flying saucers have invaded our planet. Washington, London, Paris, Moscow are key targets. The whole world is under attack. Can it survive? survivors of a disintegrated solar system. At this moment, the remainder of our fleet is circling your globe. What do you want with me? Arrange for your world leaders to confer with us in the city of Washington. They set up an electronic screen. The artillery doesn't penetrate. Never before has the screen reached such heights of excitement. Breathtaking spectacle. Hair-raising terror. See the saucer man's high frequency disintegrator. See flying saucers travel thousands of miles in seconds. See great cities leveled by flying saucer monsters. Last look. The same kind of thing that's watched us since the beginning of the project. People of Earth, attention. People of Earth, attention. This is a voice speaking to you from thousands of miles beyond your planet. They're coming down to take over. They made that clear to us in the saucer. To the best of our knowledge, my wife and I are the only ones left alive. Yes, bust out those Harryhausen special effects. So, man, that's to support the gaming gang, gang at pay, pay me. <laughs> Don't I mean PayPal.me? Is that what popped up in this? Hold on. Hang on. This. Boy, I tell you. Yes, it is PayPal.me. Kevin says, people of Earth, attention, at least if you speak English. Yes, and I, I would assume Wonkins was frightened to death. That's just me. Just me. I, I think he, he had a stroke right there and then gone. Gone! All right. So, tonight, I am going to share my review of... Uh, see, I had to go past the uh, intermission again. Mythic Britain and Ireland. It is from Free League Publishing. It's written by Graham Davis. Kind of interesting. We're doing back-to-back -back Graham Davis reviews this week. And uh, you'll see what I mean in just a bit. Uh, artwork is provided by Johan Egerkranz and Anton Vitus. The 156-page hardcover is available now. It's been out for a while. Carries an MSRP of $44.99. 
where you can grab just the PDF alone over at drive through RPG for $21.99. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Mythic Britain and Ireland. So uh, Kevin's asking, is anyone else getting an eternally spinning circle? Oh, crap. It is showing that we are dropping a lot of frames here. So not sure what's going on. So hang on a second. Sometimes we can shake this up if I change the settings a little bit. So, yeah, it looks like it may have just started. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's YouTube. I think it's on my end. Let's find out. No, it is. Yeah, because it's shown we've dropped almost half, not half, uh, almost 10%. Of our frames and it is not slowing down. Damn it. Yeah, what the hell's going on? We haven't had problems like this in quite a long time. So, what I'm going to do is give me a moment. See what we get. See, the thing is, if I stop, it's going to completely screw up our stream and it'll screw up the chat. So I don't know what this, what might be going on here. So I'm going to try one other thing. Because, yeah, suddenly we're just, it's awful. It just keeps going. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's right after the intermission. It looks like this is what happened. So hold on. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop the stream. Oh, wait. Now Kevin says, okay, they've got full YouTube functionality back. Uh, but it's, it's here. It's still showing a lot of dropped frames. So yeah, it's like 50, it looks like about 50 frames per second, 40 frames per second. That is a lot. So damn it. I can try stopping the stream. Well, Roger says it seems okay now. Well, we'll see what happens. But you know what? I know this is just great uh, content. I'm going to run a quick test. See what we're getting as far as, because uh, usually a good indicator is like dropped frames uh, is a dropped packet test. And just ran it, it shows that none. So showing no dropped packets. So that means it must be something else.
All right, I'm going to try some. Uh, I'm going to shake this up one last time. I'm going to see if this actually. No, it's still still showing the same. Okay. So, this is about 92 is, is with us, as is Nero's fiddle. So everybody's saying it looks okay now. Even though it's showing me that we're continuing to drop frames. So... What I basically did is I stopped recording it on my end. So all that's going on now is a stream. So what happens here is uh, going to be what we're stuck with no matter what. All right. So let's jump in. Then. So a few things I do want to mention before I start sharing my thoughts and flipping on through Mythic Britain and Ireland for this and and first of all, the fine folks over at Free League Publishing were kind enough to provide me with this review copy. But keep in mind, neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share this review with you. These days, it's important that you know that. We're not going to look at each and every page inside, and I am going to try to stay as spoiler-free as I possibly can. Now, of course, there are a trio of adventures in this book. In fact, almost half the page count is devoted to a trio of adventures. So if you are a player hoping that your game master is going to run any of the adventures in Mythic Britain and Ireland, I would definitely recommend you tune out now. You don't want the surprises ruined because of you watching this review. But of course, you can let your game master know about this video so they can approach this and make an informed buying decision. So Nero's Fiddle says it's all good on their end now. Take a look here. It's still showing it's dropping frames, but I don't know. Uh, Kevin says this looks pretty high def for that few frames per second. Is it really that bad? I... <laughs> Gotta let me know if it is. Uh... So, this about 92 says, yes, yeah, built by humans, therefore bound to break down and disappoint. All right. So, my apologies. I mean, it could be something going on around here with our internet, but I mean, we have not had issues with streams outside of my own human errors. In a long, long time. All right, so we're going to jump on in. We'll see see how it goes. And Kevin uh, was talking about high def. I have made some adjustments here, more so with videos that I record. And the next videos that get uploaded should show that. I don't think it's going to affect the stream at all. So we get a gazetteer about Britain, Scotland, well, England, I guess we'll say, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. And this is all just pretty much bite-sized chunks of information about the cities, uh, about uh, a little bit of the countryside, but for the most part, we have a focus on London, Liverpool, Edinburgh, uh, Dublin, Belfast, and but mainly it is London. So we get uh, just little breakdowns of various different uh, famous areas of these cities, some adventure hooks. Because if you're not overly familiar with Vesson, that uh, this is kind of a folkloric horror role-playing game, which takes place in the late Victorian era. And the core book is actually Scandinavian. And this supplement 
is bringing the action into the UK. So we have a trio of new character types. We have the athletes, we get the socialites, and we also have the uh, entertainer. And if, if you've checked out my review of Vessen, I like this game quite a lot. It is pretty rules light because it is built on the Year Zero engine, which powers a lot of the role-playing games from Free League Publishing. So it's very easy to wrap your heads around. This is not like overly dark. So this is not a Call of Cthulhu sort of game. This is not a game of cosmic horror. Uh, and even though terrible things happen, horrifying things happen, uh, people are killed, murdered, children are stolen, things like that, it is not overly dark. There is still that uh, sort of feeling of hope with every uh, one of these uh, stories in that. So that is one of the aspects I, I really like about this role-playing game is that even though it's spooky and scary, it's still hopeful. And the player characters are part of this society, at least in England it's the society, but uh, they belong to a group who is ex uh, you know, kind of investigating these mysteries. This is also a, a pretty solid mystery game as well. So we get... A bit of the Gazetteer, we get the three new uh, adventurer types, and then we get a bestiary with some uh, monsters and creatures that you would find in the UK. So Kevin says it's actually looking very good for as bad as you said it was showing you. Yeah, well, I don't know. All I can tell you is it's continuing to show that frames are dropping so maybe it's not as bad as being indicated to me so i don't know all right so anyway so we get quite a few uh creatures that are kind of native to the united kingdom and then we'll also have some creatures where we get uh they are they're from the core book so they're more nordic but we kind of get the English versions of them. Now, something about this game, if you're not overly familiar with it, is that stat blocks are very small, very to the point. You're not looking at tons and tons of like special abilities and things like that. As far as each of these, we're going to get a breakdown of what is this thing. And not all of them are evil because we do deal with the fae and fairies and things like that in this game. And some, like, we'll see, there's the puka. And, of course, if you're familiar with one of my favorite movies of all time, Harvey, which is uh, about James Stewart and a puka, uh, you find that they're actually benevolent. They're, they're not evil. Uh, they're kind of tricksters and they like to to uh play pranks on people but they don't mean any harm and then of course we've got creatures here that uh hate humanity and just wants to eat their flesh and suckle the marrow from their bones <laughs> and then he good asks is this the same artist who does dragon bane i believe it is i believe it is johan Egerkranz who did uh, the Dragon Bane artwork. I believe we're going to see that as well. I have reached out to my contact with Free League Publishing because they've got a lot of stuff that's, that's coming out uh, as far as they've got the, the new Twilight 2000 supplement, Urban Operations, which I'll have a news piece about tomorrow. We've got uh, Dragon Bane. We've got the two books for Forbidden Lands, which 
Stay tuned. I'm going to talk about that Forbidden Lands contest once again. So we get the uh, bestiary with the various different creatures. And I will point out that, as you can see, there's a lot of white space here. And that is one of the problems I have had with some of these Wasson releases is, there's, in my opinion, there is too damn much just white space, just blank space here. And this isn't terrible, but there, it almost feels like, and I'm not saying that Free League is intentionally trying to, you know, bump the page count because I don't think that's really the case. I think it's just they want to have a specific sort of look for this game and its its releases. But to me, there just seems to be a lot of empty space. Now, I will point out that the production quality of this is excellent. We have that thick, kind of almost parchment-like paper that we see with some of the Free League publishing releases that this will hold up to a lot of repeated use at your game table. So love that. I love the artwork throughout, even though it does have, it's it's not really a, a, a realistic art style. I do really enjoy it. I think it's really well done. And we have a trio of adventures. So the first adventure, and they all they are all kind of British mysteries. So there there is a kind of a, a real British feel to them. And of course, that's what I would expect from Graham Davis. So I mean, just saying. And the first adventure is that a young woman is murdered. And there is this standing stone that they call Old Meg or the Old Meg. And some people think it's just a stone. Other people think it is a witch who was cursed and is trapped in this stone. And of course, let's be honest, this wouldn't be much of a scary adventure if it turned out to just be a stone. So in this adventure, a, a suspect has been apprehended and they are uh, the, uh, the young girl's beau. And of course, you're, you're trying to not only find what's really going on, but you're trying to save their life as well. So one aspect of that adventure I think is pretty interesting is how you're looking at uh, one solution is not going to provide the answer for your other problem. So I like that quite a lot. The three adventures I like quite a bit. Uh, the gazetteer part of the book, I, I like the little tidbits of information, but that's what they really kind of break down to is tidbits of information. So like the times, there's a section here about the times, okay? That's it. Uh, the necropolis and the necropolis train, uh, you know, a couple of paragraphs devoted to it. So you get little, little bite-sized nuggets about the various different major cities in the United Kingdom. But is it enough to real? At least for me, I don't feel it's it's enough where I would be comfortable running something where it's like, oh yeah, oh, I'm I'm really giving you a feel like you're in London. Now, of course, there are plenty of other supplements for other horror role-playing games which you could crib from. <laughs> now, there's no doubt about that. I talk about that all the time. But I'm talking about what's in this book itself. So then we have another adventure. And this is about a Welsh mine and how there's conflict between the... Creatures who live in the mine, 
and the mine owner and then the reverend of the town. And one theme that runs through all three of these adventures is the old versus the new. The folklorish pagan fae and the, you know, modern or at least Victorian era modern, uh, like approach to life and how they kind of collide. Kevin King is with us. Welcome. Says every free league book they own is beautifully laid out. Yeah, I got to say, for the most part, free league publishing, just about everything I have ever reviewed from them has gotten at least uh, a recommendation or, you know, a very, you know, emphatic recommendation from me. Only thing I have ever had kind of a negative review for is their starter set for Tales from the Loop, which in my opinion, there really wasn't anything to it. Then finally, we have the Hampstead Group, which is about this young woman who has formed this like kind of art appreciation group in London and she's a very strange person. In fact, maybe she isn't human at all. <laughs> and I like this one quite a bit. Uh, this is a pretty interesting adventure because it's got some pretty cool NPCs. And you can really keep your players guessing. There are some Nice red herrings you can kind of dangle in their faces. So, and then we get our handouts, which are nicely done. And a bibliography. And that is Lawson, Mythic Britain and Ireland from Free League Publishing. Swing back over to the other camera because I'm going to share my final thoughts as well as my review score. If I can get that to switch over. Yes, I was playing around with things trying to you know, get it uh, where we weren't dropping frames, which interestingly enough, we stopped dropping frames. But unfortunately, it's showing like 24% of this, well, of the video was lost. So I don't know. Fingers crossed that we're okay as far as the stream went. Don't know. All right. Anyway, so as far as uh, the source book, the Mythic Britain and Ireland, I like it. I do have quibbles, though. I already mentioned, in my opinion, Far too much white space. I know that is a real issue for some folks out there because they have commented on our first look videos as well as on some of the reviews I've done uh, for, well, actually, I think it's more the first look videos where it's like, wow, man, there's, there's just way too much white space. I agree. I certainly do agree. Uh, I would like to have seen a little more content packed into it. Gazetteer part. There, like I said, there's interesting tidbits that you can utilize, but it's not, it's certainly not going to provide you with any sort of deep dive into the UK at all. But like I said, fairly interesting. The three new character types, they're pretty cool. I could see people taking those roles on, and the adventures themselves, I like. So on a scale of 0 to 10, I do recommend Vossen, uh, Mythic, Britain, and Ireland. I give it a 7 out of 10. Not my favorite release I've seen from Free League Publishing lately, but still, I think it's pretty cool. I would probably... Look at if, you know, if you like game PDFs, if you've got no issue with that, I would probably point you in that direction, maybe rather than picking up 
the book itself. Although, like I said, production quality, really, really well done. So uh, Anthony points out, yep, the quality of Free League's books is fantastic. Yeah, the production quality is always really, really well done. So it's kind of funny. I almost feel bad giving this a 7 out of 10, but like, like I said, I like it. It didn't blow me away, though. All right, so that is it. So don't forget, speaking of free league and production quality, I am currently in the midst of a contest to give away in PDF a copy of Forbidden Lands and the two new releases that are coming for it, the Blood March as well as Book of Beasts. So... Every one of the live shows until June 14th, leave a comment. So it's pretty simple. Hopefully you give a thumbs up to the video. There's nothing I can do about that, but hopefully you do. If you're a subscriber and you leave a comment, and it's got to be a real comment. It can't just be like, hi, Jeff. That is an entry into the contest. So you can comment on tonight's show, tomorrow's show, show after that. That's three entries into this contest. And then on June 15th, I will give away uh, a copy of the box set for Forbidden Lands, as well as those two new releases. And that is the release date of that. So that's why I am going to be giving it away on the 15th. So get in the running. Like I said, all you got to do, be a subscriber, make a comment on the video. And it doesn't have to do with Forbidden Lands. It could be about something you saw on the show. That's it. Easy peasy. All right, on tomorrow's show, remember I said we're going back to back with Graham Davis? It's because I'll be reviewing Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, Empire in Ruins, Part 5 of the Enemy Within Director's Cut from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. Then on Wednesday's show, I'm going to review Hod City from Osprey Games. A week from today, we're going to dive in and take a first look at Organic Towns from Headless Hydra Press. I think it's press, right? Yep, it is. It is Headless Hydra Press. I shared a news piece about this last week, and I did mention that the author was sending this along. So we are going to take a look at this next Monday. So John Mascola says, a lot of empty space is not good, but it's a European style of RPG book. I don't know if I can cut it slack like that, because if you think about it, all the Free League publishing books are European RPG books. And most of them are not laid out like that. Wasson has a particular style of layout. So can't cut it slack for being a, a Euro RPG because we've reviewed or taken a look at too a lot of European role-playing games and they don't have white space like that. So... Eh. it's not like he said oh gosh don't buy it don't buy this <laughs> it's just, a seven is still a positive review it's a recommendation it's a thumbs up all righty that is it for this time out if you like the video by all means please give it a quick thumbs up subscribe to the gaming gang channel if you haven't already and if you do subscribe don't forget ding that bell because it'll not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evening. Monday? Wait, no. Damn it, they snuck up on me again. <clears throat> Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings. <laughs> Here on YouTube, it'll also let you know when I upload other videos, such as my Why You Should Play 7th Edition Call of Cthulhu 
from Chaosium Inc. A big thank you to this week's sponsor, Armored Games, and their Kickstarter for the night role-playing game. I'll be back tomorrow. So, if you are watching live, thanks for watching. If you watched live and took part in chat, big tip of the cap, because not only were you keeping each other company as all those frames were getting dropped, you also kept me company as well. So the Madman says they're not going to be in tomorrow. Game night's canceled. It's his daughter's 21st birthday. Wow, well, happy birthday to your daughter. Anywho, I know a lot of you out there, you don't have an opportunity to watch live. It doesn't matter if you're watching live or on Memorex. Really do appreciate each of you taking time out of your busy lives to watch any of the videos here on the Gaming Gang channel. Everybody enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is in your neck of the woods. And of course, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, that's okay. You don't have to leave just yet. In fact, why don't you subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel right here or take a peek at the latest live stream or even find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks again for watching.